Good morning, everyone. The cold is upon us. Today, in the next few days, the low is gonna be right around 30 degrees. Not optimal with crops in the ground. However, it's been warm. It's only gonna last a short amount of time. So we're just gonna weather the storm and see what we can do after. The field cultivators are completely caught up on groundwork. They're just sitting here. We've had a few tints of rain over the last few days, four or five or six millimeters. I'm not entirely sure on the gauge amount. When it does dry back up, we will still have some areas where we need to take the field cultivators back out and level it out, such as spots where we've done some backhoe work, fixed tile holes, done a little drainage work. We'll take the field cultivators back out there and make sure it's nice and smooth. That way it's not a rough ride for the planter. After this period of cold weather is over, the next perfectly dry opportunity we have, I am going full speed planting beans. Anything's possible, but this should be the worst period of cold weather we have for the rest of the season. When the temperature in short term forecast starts to appear to be warming up, then we will finish planting corn. We're gonna go see what kind of trouble we can get into today. Smash that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more, and comment if you have any questions. Let's get to work. Everyone's constantly asking me to show more of the field cultivators. I'm not gonna go work any ground with this, but I will show you how it unfolds. There's a fancy little lever here. Push it down, bam, there it goes. A little water coming off of it from the rain we had over the weekend. Forty-four and a half foot of dirt moving capability right there. And we get to go grease it. Dad and I chose two completely different methods to how we wanted to be lazy. He chose to keep his wings up and have to go back up there and unfold them after he's done. I would rather crawl under the field cultivator and grease it all while I'm there as opposed to have to get back up in the tractor again. A lot of crawling around. This one looks like it hasn't been greased in a while, so I'm gonna give it a little bit extra. Why do you always leave things in the way? Got to fold her back up. We've got the tractor to move that was causing the blockade. This one's not in the best spot, but it's out of the way. We're gonna pull a planter in right there, put it down, bring the seed tender around, and load it right there. Hello, old friends. Perfect. When the tires are oriented this way, it's actually extremely easy to get to the oil dipstick. <laughs> it's pretty chilly outside this morning, if you can't tell. We're gonna make sure that the tractor is adequately warmed up before we even pull it out of the barn. I have a hunch. This is about where they're gonna need to be for the field we're headed to. Very good ground. Watch me have to get out in the field and put them back in deeper. All right, I think she's good to go. We gotta get it nice and low, that way it's easy to step up onto when we need to load it with the seed tender. That's pulling around on the truck as we speak. The tire looks a little low. The nicest thing about the seat tender, one man can operate it. If your hands get cold while you're loading the planter, is it too cold to be planting beans? Time will tell. The air compressor's in high demand this morning. Cold weather always brings the grip out, yeah, that's for sure. Figured I'll clean my windows while I wait. all the dust on here. Tires are all aired up, windows are clean. Let's go get to work. Looks like Easter Bunny stopped by the planter. We're missing a closing wheel spring and adjustment. We're gonna fix that before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Double check on our seeds actually dialed in about where we want them. A little between an inch and a half and two inches deep. We got that row unit closing wheel fixed. Go time. This is by far one of my favorite farms and also one of our most productive farms. I've got a lot of memories across these acres, tracing back to my grandparents who lived in that house there. My family has been farming this ground for a very long time. If you could imagine putting the inrows on this entire field, it's gonna take a while. Right across the drainage ditch there is that cornfield we planted about a week ago. Looks pretty good. It's incredible how well these corn stalks worked up over this last week or so. If the ground conditions were not this perfect, there's no chance I would even consider planting right now, but they are, so let's roll the dice. I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, but the dust was knocked over this corn post. Let's grease it. 
Surely it was not the planner driver. No chance at all. There's only a slight dust today. Craziest thing happened right after I filmed over here at this corner post last time, it got bent over this way. Someone's been coming around here while I'm gone and knocking them over, I think. The only thing I dislike about this entire farm is this tiny little section of point rows. They're just a massive inconvenience to have to work around. Then you get to go into the half mile long rows out on the main part of the field. Why wow, you guys missed one. I'm supposed to fix those. I've had a lot of interest in the comments on previous videos asking why we plant our corn and soybeans at specific depths and what is our motivation for doing so. There are specific ranges that these seeds like to be placed in for optimal germination and early plant growth. If you plant them too shallow or too deep, you can cause issues with the seedlings that can actually last all the way until harvest with a negative effect on yields. There are two primary considerations for how deep you put the seed. You want the seed to be deep enough that it's in moisture, but shallow enough that it does not struggle to break through the crust on top of the soil. If the seed is planted very shallow, the sunlight and other environmental factors on the surface can wick that moisture away from the surrounding soil, leaving the seed in a dry seed bed. Moisture is one of the critical aspects of germination. Without moisture, your seed will just sit there in the ground. You'll have to wait on a rain for that seed to imbibe enough water to germinate. Although you never know what you're going to get, on some seasons it may be weeks before that seed ever receives the moisture it needs to germinate and begin its life. You would think that's easy to avoid by just putting the seed very deep in the ground. The deeper you go in the soil, the more moisture there's going to be. However, if you go too deep in the soil, you present your seed with the challenge of overcoming the weight of soil that sits on top of it to break through to the surface to reach sunlight and the environment. This is where the major differences between planting depth in corn and soybeans emerge from. A corn seedling, which is a monocot, shoots up one seedling straight out of the ground. We would refer to it as a spike. Corn is spiking through the ground. Corn has less to overcome as it comes through the soil. Soybeans, on the other hand, have two seedlings. They're dicotyledons. These seedlings do not spike out of the ground. Rather, they almost stand up. Imagine that the soybeans are touching their toes and standing up after a long day. They have to curl themselves out of the ground. If soybean plants face significant challenges in breaking through that surface, they can actually break the neck of the plant trying to power through that soil. Both crops can be greatly affected by an extremely heavy rainfall on a freshly planted seed bed. A heavy rainfall acts as a packing agent, flattens the ground out, and creates a crust over the top of the ground that makes it difficult for corn and soybean plants to emerge. This crust often will cause a reduction in stand count and may even justify replanting if the conditions are bad enough. Years ago, farmers utilized a tool called a rotary hoe to break open the seed bed if this were to happen. You don't see them as much anymore. The seedlings have a lot more vigor. We still use one in the last few years. Conditions are bad enough. I was talking about those rotary hoes earlier and I didn't think there was any way I could explain to you what exactly they did other than break up the soil crust. What are the chances? A rotary hoe disc blade. It's along for the ride now. On our farm, with the soil types and climate that we have, we prefer to put our corn in the ground about an inch and a half to two inches deep. That would be about 37 millimeters to 50 millimeters, roughly. I believe there's 25.4 millimeters in an inch. Don't even get me started. I wish the United States used the metric system, but we don't. I just have to use what I learned. We like to plant our soybeans around an inch deep, so 25 millimeters. As we've been trying to plant soybeans into these cool weather conditions, we've actually put our seeds deeper in the ground, lower than we would usually. Although soybean seedlings are much more vigorous than a corn seedling, which is why the corn planter is not running, the extra depth in the soil acts as a buffer against the cool conditions on top. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, and the next day are all going to have lows around 30 degrees. That is not good weather for growing a crop. Another factor that affects our ability to plant soybeans deeper than usual and in poor conditions than we would have in years past is the effectiveness of modern seed treatment. Many soil-borne pathogens attack young seedlings, soybeans especially. These seed treatments offer a certain level of protection for our seeds in the ground. That way they can withstand a longer period of suboptimal growth. Our hope is next week, when the temperatures get back up into the upper 60s and lower 70s, that these soybeans and the rest of our fields around will pop out of the ground with ease. This allows us to reduce strain on our equipment and our health as we're covering acres on days that we would normally be sitting. It goes against what we have done for ages to plant soybeans deeper than one inch. Over the past few years, research has indicated that deeper planted soybeans have just as much, if not more, yield potential than soybeans that are planted in shallow conditions. Our corn placement has not changed for years. It seems to be that an inch and a half to two inches is the gold standard for where you want your corn seed to be in order to produce a good stand, have great emergence, 
important to have a fantastic crop. Agronomic decisions such as seed depth are not based on random anecdotal simulations on our farm. Rather, we base it on years and years of studies and trials around the country and in our region to determine what is optimal for our crop and what we can do to give it the best start possible. I just want to remind you that what we do on our farm may not translate to other farms even in our own region. What you do on your farm may be vastly different than what we do. Even some of the things we do on this operation, someone a couple miles to the south of us would not agree with. It's worked for us and we will continue to push on and push for great yields. I hope that clears up some of the confusion about seed depth and placement out in our fields. That's probably enough of me boring you today with fun farming facts. Let's spice this up a little bit. Roll the footage. We've been in here for a long time, ladies and gentlemen. Not quite dark yet. Dust is still rolling. Pretty big field. This field will be the true test on how accurate we are at knowing how much seed we need for a farm. Pickup truck's waiting. I've only got five to 10 more acres left and we'll be done for the night. Field cultivators did not work that terrace bottom. That is a red flag that I should not get in it with the planter. I may try a little 2019 tech to go and hang wing into it. Well, that's it for this field, guys. We've been in the tractor for a long time. Turn our flashers on and get this thing folded up. The amount of dust I've accrued today is insane. Once we have the rows picked up, we're ready to hit the road.
short little trip down the road. We're back. We're gonna get the doors shut up while we let the tractor cool off a little bit. It's had a long, hard day of work, just like me. Let's shut her off for the night. Well, everyone, that about concludes our day out here on the farm. As always, I really appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for your support. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you wanna see more and comment if you have any questions. I'm ready for this cool weather to be out of here and it to be warm, sunny, and great crop growing conditions outside. Have a great night. Peace.